Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we are going to have a look at the top five packages to manage images on Linux Mint. This would apply to other Linux distros. However, there are going to be some uh, some alterations. Uh, if you're running Ubuntu, you know there is um, uh, there's Shotwell is pre-installed instead of Pix um, on um, something like running GNOME. Then you might get uh, Gthumb instead, which all have some similar uh, similar uses and functionality. So there'll be some differences. Now, a couple ground rules I'm doing on this one is the first is we are only looking at raster images, not vector images. So things like Inkscape, as great as they are are not going to be included. Um, the other area is I'm going to be looking at only free and open source software that is available directly from the repositories. So I do realize there is a whole lot of really great stuff out there uh, that, that can help do image stuff. I'm not looking at those because either we have to install PPAs or we have to compile the software or we have to uh, we have to uh, purchase it. And what our focus is here is not a image professional who would definitely want to go through the, uh, those, those tasks, but we're looking at the individual person who's wanting to switch to Linux, but still be able to manage their personal photo collections. So that's what this video is about. We are using Linux Mint Cinnamon today. And so all of the programs here are either pre-installed on Linux Mint Cinnamon, and I think that's three of them that we're going to look at are pre-installed, and then two of them you will need to install. And so let's go ahead and dive into this. So we're going to put my picture up here and we're just going to be running right off the desktop. Of course, I pulled the cute cat pictures back. So the very first, uh, the very first one that we're going to be looking at today is if you want to just double click on a photo and view it. We have our basic installed Linux Mint uh, X viewer. So here's our X viewer. This is Linux Mint Cinnamon 18.1. We have uh, 1.2.2. Of course, uh, 18.2, which is in beta and should be out. Maybe it might be out by now. I didn't check the numbers yet. Um, but uh, the beta release uh, of 18.2 uh, is out. And um, that will have some updates to X viewer, which did some, uh, some changes to the UI, making things a little bit better. Um, this is nice. You can just use the air over arrows, scroll through through the cute cat pictures here. Of course, I'm using all cat pictures on this particular video here, just uh, for the case of uh, uh, just so that uh, we can um, use some nice neutral photos. Okay, so um, you can see down here at the very bottom, we'll have the pixel dimension size, how big it's displaying, and this file size. We also have down here the number of images in this. This is one of those really handy things, um, just a basic image viewer, uh, very much like on you know old old Windows versions, like you know back in that back in Windows Seven days. You can double click on a picture of you know, the basic Windows picture viewer. Um, this isn't any more complicated than that. We have the ability to do some basic rotations. And um, that is pretty much about it. We can um, we can scale these up or down on this uh, as you go. And then there's previous or next. Um, so that's um, you know that's pretty much. Of course, in here you have your tools. You can set this as the wallpaper. You can open up the folder containing it. Here's more properties. You know the name of the file, the height, the width, the type, the size, what folder it's in. Here's some basic metadata. You know, here it's metadata from the camera, the flash should not fire, compulsory flash mode, you know, all this basic information here. And then here's the camera it was on, oh, it was on the Nikon, okay, good to know. I think, that, I think I lost that camera out geocaching somewhere in a desert, how exciting. All right, so uh, that is just your basic uh, number one, if you just need to, um, if you just need to, quickly look at a photo. Now, if you are looking for something more like iPhoto or anything that's going to do more of a photo management, library management type thing, then the next one is called Pix. And on Ubuntu, uh, very similar to Shotwell and anything running like a GNOME shell would be, um, 
would be something like uh, uh, G-Thumb. All have a very similar functionality. So here you can, uh, you can see the various images much easier to see multiple folders. So I might use this program if I'm going through and wanting to uh, wanting to make sure images are in the right folder, verifying folder names, moving things around because I can grab images and move them around if I need to. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that I can do. Of course, from here, we can also uh, double click the image, view it up, uh, view it up close. And as an individual image is, is selected, we have a couple panels over here. We can edit the image. What's nice about this one is I can very quickly go through a, uh, in through a panel and I can do some basic adjustments. So, you know, here's a histogram color adjustments uh, we can do. Um, so this would allow me to just, you know, adjust some different settings in here. Um, so I can do just some basic things if I want to come in the photo and just really quickly dig through the photos and make some slight changes. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel so I don't accidentally change my, my, my cat photo. And then down here under your properties, you'll see that you have a lot of your metadata stuff here. So here this is taken on an uh, iPhone 5C. Um, you know, it has a lot of the other different information that we have on this, the date it was taken, the name, etc. So on here you can add, um, you know, there's a lot of different, a lot of different functions. The other thing that uh, that this one does is if you have anything like a camera, and you just plug the camera right on in. If I can remember where my, uh, there it is. If you plug a camera into uh, into the computer, Pix will enable you to uh, auto import the photo. So I'm not sure if this will work if I just plug the camera in like this. I have no idea. I've never actually plugged this camera in with the computer with the camera cable. I usually do it with just plugging the SD card in, but this particular computer does not actually have an SD card reader. Um, see if I need to turn it on or whatever. You, yep, there we are. Okay, so here um, you can see it says what would you like to do. And then I can come down here and I can import the photos with pics. So this will allow me to open this up. It'll open up the camera view. And then um, what you can do is it will tell you, here's all the photos. You can see this is the one I was using to take the photos for my um, tinfoil hat times. And then the destination, push import, it's just automatically going to take these and dump them in. Now, I have never been a form of this type of automation, so I've never actually done this. Um, it should work fairly smoothly, but for me, I, I am a, a manual guy. I like just taking the card out, plug it into the computer, manually move things over. That's just the way I do. But if you are into automated importing things, this is where you do it. Of course, the way I might do it using a camera like this is, you know, I'd have the card cleared after each time I do something. This is actually the, the camera here. I'm actually going through and taking photos of the things as I'm minimizing my life. I'm taking a lot of photos. So I'm going to be importing these and then I can dest you know, I can change the, the folder here and, uh, you know, I can automatically put in a date, time, subfolder, um, whatever else I want to do. And so down here I can do just all sorts of things. Um, let's see, file date, custom format. Um, See, I don't like this type of formatting stuff. This is why I always do it manually because I have, uh, if you look at my full photo library, I have them categorized, you know, you know, outdoor kit pictures, cameras, trips, cats, you know, whatever. And so I just like to move these around. Now, of course, I can come down here, select other, and I could go directly into my pictures. I could come over here, create a new folder and say, uh, minimizing my life and I could do something like that and then now that I'm in minimizing my life I can click open um, and that way it goes into there of course it's still doing the uh, don't do that there we go so now I can import and it's going to import all of the images so you'll see it's importing the images I'm going to go ahead and push stop because this is not the computer I want my images imported on um, but that's kind of how that, that functionality works. So we're going to go ahead and uh, eject the camera. 
unmount you. Okay. So that is Pix. So Pix is very nice because it can be a full uh, a full library organizer. It can import your photos. It can do quick edits on the fly. It can do all sorts of different things. The one thing I do not know if this can do, and you can let me know if, if you know if it does, is I'm not sure you can do any batch processing. So of course you can export to, import from, and export to various web accounts. So this actually might not be a, a bad function as well. I totally forgot this could do this. Uh, so if you are a person that utilizes social media for your images, uh, anything like that, you can import to, uh, import from, or export to uh, these individual social media accounts um, so that you have the ability to do that. And then I think the contact sheets, you can create a, a um, like a contact sheet of something. I don't know, let me, tr eh, I'll try that off camera. Um, so there's a lot of things that Pix can do. Um, I think one of the reasons I don't use this nearly as much is I don't really edit images for my personal photos quite as much. Um, but uh, there is uh, there is Pix. The third one I wanted to look at is if you need to do some more advanced editing, there's a couple of image editors. One of these is GIMP. Um, so GIMP is uh, a little bit more professional of a system. You can do a lot of the things you can do in Photoshop with GIMP without a whole lot of hassle. Um, in fact, I have, I'm not sure if it's this one. I think it's the one on my other computer. I have my GIMP set up to, uh, just to kind of set up, it, set itself up just like a Photoshop does with all the same hotkeys because I'm so used to those hotkeys. Um, but you can come into here if you're if you're a professional with this switching to Linux. Uh, you can come down into your preferences, your keyboard shortcuts. You can kind of make this thing your own. But GIMP is um, it's just about as powerful as Photoshop. It's getting better every year. Um, so it's a it's a great place where you can do a whole lot more uh, a whole lot more in, in um, a whole lot more things than than you can with everything else. For example, you can do layers. You can do uh, shadings, opacity, uh, import text over neat over it. Um, let's see, I'll do uh, cute kitties gotta sleep. Um, and then go ahead and change the color of the text, change the size of the text. So you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, the one downside of this is if you are used to Photoshop is layer styles is uh, layer styles is not uh, is not something that uh, is available. There you go. Cute kitties got to sleep. Look at that. Um, but you can do a whole lot of other stuff with it. Now, so that's one of those things I don't like about it is it sometimes gets hard to grab the individual things that I want to move. So there you go. Cute kitty's got to sleep. Now, some of the layer styles, of course, if you want to do like drop shadows, you can accomplish that without layer styles. You can just come down here, light and shadow. You can drop a shadow on top of the text. And so, you know, there's things that you can do without having to worry about the layer styles that Photoshop has. Now, if layer styles are your... Um, are your uh, your deciding factor? You absolutely have to have layer styles, um, or you know you're staying on Windows. Then then fear not. We do have Krita. If I remember where Krita get, actually gets installed to, For some reason it did not get installed under. Interesting. Well, I know I installed Krita. It does not it seem it did not seem to appear in my menu. <laughs> I'm just gonna right click and open. <laughs> I'll have to fix that later. Um, to come in here and configure my menu to add credit. I'm not sure why it did not. Uh, oh, well, I'll worry about that again later. Um, th now I've had a chance to, uh, I've had a chance to play with Krita some more. Um, there's a lot of things I like about Krita that, uh, really, really goes a long way towards being GIMP replacements. Um, the one deciding factor that I cannot use Krita for at all right now is that, the font style, um, the font options don't uh, do not uh, properly function. 
Um, so basically, it's a matter of the um, uh, it's a matter of the uh, of how the the text is is manipulated. So if you come over here, you can surely adjust that. But if you uh, oh come on, that's what I don't like about the thing. But you can easily just woo all this and. That may not seem like a big deal for you, but if you're actually doing any real graphics for anybody, this is an absolute deal breaker. So this program is completely unusable for me with what I do. Now, I will say this, that that is the biggest thing on their radar to fix. So as Krita comes out with a next major version, they, they released some minor bug fixes um, uh, just a few weeks ago. But as far as their next major release, I do not know when that's going to be. Maybe somebody watching this does know. That is key on the target is a complete overhaul of the text tools. If they fixed the text tools on Krita, this would be my number one um, application for uh, doing image things on um, on Linux because this this thing here does just about everything uh, just about everything that um, uh, Photoshop would do otherwise. It's just the fact that that this uh, that these um, uh, the text images don't work right. It's completely useless to me. Um, but it does have all of the same layer styles just like uh, Photoshop has. You know, so if you're looking for, you know, for this kind of stuff. Um, then you'll see here that it's uh, it is certainly a, uh, a strong contender. Like I said, all they need to do is just fix that text styles. Um, but, um, that's kind of, that's kind of that. Uh, so that is your next one. Now your last, uh, your last, uh, editor is actually image magic. So this comes pre-installed on Linux Mint. Um, and this is, um, it's basically actually designed to be used in a terminal, but it has this extremely minor thing. Just clicking on the image, you get a little menu over here. You can crop it, chop it, flip it, rotate it. I mean, sear up this kitty and a fry it up in a wok. No, we don't want to do that. He's too cute to fry up in a wok. But see, I mean, look at this. Crop, chop, flop, flip. Come on, man. I could not find a way to rescale it. Um, it might be in here somewhere. I really don't use this much. Um, but there's a lot of things you can see. We normalized it. That seemed to work. Uh, we have the ability to sharpen it. Let's go ahead and sharpen the image. Uh, yep, we'll go ahead and sharpen it, see what that does. Um, we have the ability to solarize it. Uh, and that's going to be too much, but anyway, there you go. There's one solarized cat. See, now it looks like we fried it up. <laughs> Just going to go ahead and undo that. Um, of course, I'd have to um, I'd have to save it to have any of those. But where this one really stands out and why I wanted to pick it is it has the it has a lot of fun fun things that I can use as a web developer to help me when clients hand me a giant block of photos. It's like oh lord, they just handed me a hundred photos that are crazy extensions and weird file sizes. <laughs> so. Uh, what I did is I took all of my kitty cat pictures and I threw them over here into this folder. Why is it not loading? That is totally weird. It's like, it's sitting here. It's like, um, says loading. See, that's weird. Come on. Apparently my computer had a momentary hiccup there. So I took these images and one of the things you'll notice about these images is they are, uh, they're all the capitalized JPG extension. Kind of crazy if you're on web servers. Now, of course, if you're on a Windows web server, Windows is, um, Windows is not case sensitive, but a Linux web server is case sensitive. So if I'm doing all my code and, blah, 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 and I'm testing it all out here on Linux, and I transfer that code over onto Windows, they can throw whatever file over there they want. And things would still work because nobody really notices. But then if they're like, well, this hosting sucks, and they take it off of this, drop it onto a Linux-based web server, everything goes to hell in handbasket. Well, the extensions were the wrong size. Now, this particular camera I had for some stupid reason gave me extensions in, in full size, <laughs> like in, in, the, uh, in all caps. Well, Linux is truly um, case sensitive. So where uh, Image Magic stands out is you can do full batch conversions in a terminal. 
So we'll go ahead and uh, boot up a terminal here. And what you can do, there's a lot of things like convert is one of the things, but the, um, the Mogrify is, I'm just gonna flip through some of the things that I've done here. Um, I goofed up the first one there. Um, so what we're gonna do is if you, is, is, is Mogrify, I guess. Um, so what this is going to do is, um, um, basically this is, you know, compound word modify, you know, modify, uh, convert, things like that. So this will enable you to move all of your images to a different format. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, modify everything with a capital uh, JPG extension. And we are going to, we're just gonna go ahead and change these. Actually, I'm gonna change these into the lowercase JPEGs. Just do the dash format JPG. And then what we're gonna do is hit the enter. Uh, what in the world? Did I do that incorrectly again? Let me go back and do the one that I did earlier. Ah, uh, duh, I didn't change to my folder. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, my brain's only on, on half cylinders today. I'm like, yeah, I have, thought I had that correct. There we go. So now what you'll see that it's gonna do is it's gonna take a copy and make a copy of all of those photos now with the lowercase extension. So now I can deal with uh, deal with all of those. And uh, so this is, uh, is, this is kind of a way, of course, now I can, um, uh, I can of course make a directory. Let's do converted. And then we're going to move star.jpg into converted. All right, so now we were able to easily separate our .jpegs from our capital .jpegs so that we could easily isolate the images. Now notice that we have changed the extension very quickly. We have maintained the file names, um, and then we have isolated them into their own separate uh, into their own separate means all through the terminal really quickly. So this is why this is a very handy application for a web developer because if I'm logged into an AWS, I have to figure all this kind of stuff out. I don't have any GUIs. I gotta figure this guy out. Now, this is not an application I usually deal with. Uh, usually, I have the ability to manage stuff before I transfer it over to the servers, so whatever. Um, now, the other thing is, you'll notice here that these guys are um, these guys are all uh, 1600 by 1200. Well, yeah, maybe that's a little bit too large for me, so what we're gonna do now is um, Mogrify resize, and I want to do uh, 600 by 800, and then I'm going to do star dot JPEG. So now oh, I keep on forgetting to change my folder. <laughs> so it's all things that you do when you're uh, when you're recording videos, you forget to. <laughs> so now what we'll see is it's going to go through here and it's going to modify all the images, and now. Oh, I should have done 800 by 600. Hmm. Oh, well. Because what it did is uh, it kept the size dimensions the same. Um, that's what it ended up doing is it did the size, size dimensions all the same. And uh, I should have done 800 by 600, not 600 by 800. Uh, but since uh, it, what it did is it kept the dimensions all the same, maintaining the uh, width that I requested. So it changed the height to match the, pro the proper uh, ratio, which is 450. So yeah, should have done uh, 600 by 800. In fact, let's go ahead and go back to the terminal. This will actually cause some a little bit of graininess to show up in them, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. There we go, now they're 800 by 600. So now we have batch processed our photos, we've changed the extensions, we've changed the size. So if you do need to do a batch processing, this is a nice, easy way to do it. Um, now the other thing, of course, you can do is you can write these things up in scripts. Um, and you can, of course, paste the script right into the terminal and, you know, batch process through scripts, which also means that if there's common tasks, like I know on Photoshop, I used to have to record automated scripts. So I'd go open them one photo up, hit the record, save everything out, and then I can batch process everything through. 
um, this that would allow me to come up with the scripts that I want to come up with, save them as separate scripts, and then I could actually just have a you know an image conversion location if uh, you were doing this on a regular basis. That's how exactly how you would do that. Um, now the uh, of course GIMP does ba batch processing. I don't know if Krita does. It might. Um, but anyway, uh, these were kind of my uh, my top five uh, programs or packages rather uh, to manipulate and manage your images in Linux Mint. Um, if this has been a handy video, of course you can check out the other videos here on YouTube or on the website at switchedtolinux.com. And you can also help to support the channel through Patreon and also through Amazon. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.